What's up guys and welcome to the channel. We are proud to announce that Goat Guns is now a sponsor of the Hegshot 87 channel. Now these are not just plastic toys but 100% die cast metal one third scale replicas. Everything from the America M4A1, the Goldilocks AK-47, and Mrs. Hegshot's personal favorite, the Bitch and Betty. These things are the real deal. They have functioning charging handles, bolts, mag releases, collapsible stocks, and 30 round magazines. Now they are non-firing replicas, so don't worry, even if you live in California, you can own one. Now out of the box, you will assemble them, and that's one of the fun parts about this, but the attention to detail is very impressive. The sling swivels, the gas tube, threaded barrels, ammo, how you rock the AK mags in and out, the rails, sights, everything about them is just exactly like the real thing. If you are a gun guy or gal, then these are great looking pieces on your desk, toolbox, gun safe, or anywhere else you want to show your support for black rifles. Now to top it all off, Go Guns is providing you guys with a 25% off discount code. Use the discount code HEGSHOT25. The link is in the description so you can go right over there and check out everything they have. We're not even showing you a quarter of everything they have here. So thank you to Go Guns for the support of our channel and uh, thank them for uh, the discount code they are giving you guys. Hopefully you guys will tear it up and be able to save yourself some money off of a really awesome product. We don't support crap on this channel and this is just another quality product at a discount we were able to secure for you guys. What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hegshot and thank you guys for joining us for our best small full-size gun out there ever. Uh, maybe not ever, but the best small full-size gun that we have personal experience with. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Welcome to the channel. And uh, today we're, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna go over these pistols, uh, and we're gonna go over quite a few things and what makes them the best in their own right. We are gonna pick a clear winner, and we are gonna pick our least favorite on the table as well. Uh, there may be some wild cards, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. And these guns are really really good uh, at the range and home defense that is their uh their best uh, characteristics and, and what they lend themselves well to are those two areas uh concealed carry quite a few people do carry these guns too you really have to have the right setup good holster tolster obviously is our company that's what we like to carry um and core essentials gun belts all right with those two things you can carry these not the best carry guns though but you can do it um Really quick, make sure you guys follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm going to leave the links down below. Make it really easy for you guys. We're definitely trying to ramp those things up, those two platforms, and make sure we diversify a little bit going forward here. So, uh, Also, the links to Tolster and Optics Planet and Silencer Shop and all of those guys that provide you guys discounts on all of the gear that we have reviewed in the past and we're going to continue to be pushing out. All the discount codes and the links are down below, so make sure you check those things out, man. You can get some really great deals on this stuff. So, All right, so how are we going to determine which one is best? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the key features on each one. We're going to talk about pros and cons, how they shoot, the accessories, uh, capacities, uh, sights, things like that that lend themselves well to being range guns and home defense. And then we're going to talk about that one key feature on each one that really makes that particular gun really great it's going to be hard on some of these but there is one key feature i think i can pick out that will uh really stand out amongst all of these um, at the end like i said i'm going to tell you my favorite and our least favorite and uh and why and then we will also uh, maybe throw in a couple wild cards that are not seen on this table starting out pretty much all of them have 15 round magazines you can go up uh, from there obviously if you are in a restricted state first of all I'm sorry that really sucks but uh, a lot of these options have those 10 round capacity uh, limitations you know straight from the factory so you can get these as well starting with the Glock 19 Gen 5 key features so basically what you have is one of the most rugged durable and reliable guns of all time Obviously, 15 round magazines. It comes with three of those from the factory. The Gen 5 has done a couple of uh, really cool things. They've taken away the finger grooves here in the front. They flared the magwell. Uh, you do have a reversible magazine and you have your slide stop on the other side of the pistol now for left-handed shooters. And really, when it comes to features, this is about as bare bones as it gets when it comes to 
you know, really any kind of gun, and that's their charm. Uh, very few moving parts and very clean overall. You don't have a lot going on on the frame or on the slide. Pretty comfortable point of aim. Whenever you, whenever you bring it up, I have a tendency to kind of dip down a little bit with it because I feel like when I, when I pull it out and, you know, where I feel like I'm naturally pointing out, I have to kind of bring the gun down to level it out a little bit. They, you know, everybody's different there. Um, it can come with uh, night sights from the factory, which is a big deal when you're talking about a home defense gun. But straight from the factory, you're going to get the drop in the bucket style sights. And uh, they're sufficient, but I would definitely change them out. Uh, we still haven't decided if we're going to keep this gun, to be honest with you. But uh, overall, you're going to get a very simplistic but reliable gun. Uh, pros on these guns. Now, keep in mind, we're not doing full reviews on this. So we're not going through the ins and outs on every little detail. But I will link the full reviews to all of these guns down below so you can go over and check it out. Pros on the Glock, like I said, reliable. Uh, you're going to get a gun that's going to go bang pretty much every single time. And that is the most important thing when it comes to any firearm. Uh, the capacity is great. It's a pretty decent shooter. You're probably seeing some of that footage right now. You also have the option of 33 round fun sticks. And these things are usable. Uh, they work every time. And uh, it is just... A beautiful thing whenever you see that setup. I love that. Uh, cons on it. I don't know what's going on with the finish. That is something they uh, addressed in this new Gen 5. But you can already see some discoloration starting to go on. Keep in mind, we did have this thing frozen in ice for, uh, I don't know, 16 or 17 hours. So that might have something to do with it. But it looks pretty similar to the uh, Gen 4 version that we have as well. How it just gets really discolored and... I don't know what's going on with that, but you're going to get a reliable gun. There are some other cons. I'm not a fan of this cutout right here. It depends if you go with Gen 4, Gen 3, Gen 5, whatever version you go with. You're going to have a couple little things like that. But overall, uh, the changes that they made uh, were pretty good. And how the gun shoots, it, it shoots like you would expect. I mean, it really is on target. It's not the most accurate gun that I have. But to, in a self-defense situation or at the range, uh, it does a fine job. And the one key feature on this, and I, we've kind of touched on it a couple times, is it doesn't do anything extremely well, but it does a lot of things really good. Uh, but the key feature on this one is just its ruggedness, durability, uh, reliability. Uh, it has really been unmatched. And we've seen that with some of the other line lineups of pistols and gun manufacturers. They've had some issues and some kinks to work out, even though a lot of the pistols are going off this one platform. So just some things to think about. Moving over to the M&P, which is pretty much the direct competitor to the Glock. Actually, you know, uh, most of these are direct competitors to the Glock. This probably being the closest. Key features, front and rear slide serrations. You do have your rail up here on the Glock. You have a, uh, a single rail. Most of your uh, light and laser attachments are going to work on the Glock, m and pretty much all of these options are going to work. This is a big thing because if you're using it for home defense, you want to be able to hook up a light so you know what you're actually looking at in the case of somebody breaking in or whatever the case may be. So that's really good. They've upgraded the triggers on this one, and that's one thing I want to show you as well since we're kind of getting at the shooting, but I'll talk about that here in a second. But they did upgrade the triggers on these. Uh, very nice trigger. It's kind of like, from what I've read, they pretty much have done the uh, performance center sear and, and pretty much a performance center setup in the new lineup, and it is a great pistol. You now have a reset, and uh, for those people that have stayed away from the M&P because of the trigger, you no longer have that to worry about. Grip texture has been greatly improved. Uh, now it is a rough texture finish all the way around and it just locks into your hand. And uh, speaking of that, whenever you pull this gun up, it's, it's right on target, at least for me. It's got a really natural grip angle there. And whenever you pull it up, man, it's just, it's just spot on. Uh, you have metal sights straight from the factory. So there's your three dot setup. And uh, for, a, for just a regular, a uh, basic set of steel sights dovetailed in. Uh, they do a great job. And of course you can go with night sight options on these as well. Slide stop on the other side of the gun. And your magazine uh, release is reversible. Uh, so they've done a lot of cool things with this new generation as well. 15 round magazines. Uh, this one actually came with uh, two magazines. 
but you can also use the 17 round mags in this option if you want to. Uh, pros and cons, uh, the pros on this thing, for the price you're gonna get it at, uh, we didn't talk about the price on the Glock, but you're gonna be around $550 to $600 on the Glock. Uh, for this one, you're gonna be coming in well under 500 bucks most of the time if you shop around. You can get them from anywhere from 450 to 500. I think that's a fair estimate, but these things have uh, always been centered on uh, giving you a really good gun at a fair price. Uh, cons, there's not going to be many on this gun, uh, but one thing I did notice is that the magazines will stick up, stick in the well from time to time. You just have to rip those out, and that's something I've never had a problem with on any MMP I've ever had. They're normally really responsive. On this one, uh, they have a little bit of an issue, and the grip texturing, depending on, you know, uh, your sensitivity to that, that may bug you a little bit at the range. I, I personally love it. Inside the waistband, though, you're going to notice you want to definitely keep a shirt in between your skin and this grip because it will eat you up. And I've been using, like I said, my Tolster holster for this one now for a while. And uh, it's actually, you know, uh, it's a little bit heavier, obviously, but it's not too bad of a concealed carry setup. I actually enjoy carrying this pistol. And uh, one of the things that lends to that uh, is just my my comfort and my uh, trust in this platform. I really love it. Uh, and how it shoots, man, this thing is a heck of a nice shooter. I mean, it really is, like I said, natural point of aim. The trigger is great. Let me show you the trigger here really quick. I'm just going to do a couple pulls on each one of those so you, you get an idea of where you're going to be in the range. So five pounds, 15 ounces, First pull, let's do one more and then we'll go to the Glock. We'll do that one too. Five pounds, 15 ounces, right under six pounds, very crisp. Uh, great shooter, great overall. And the one key feature on this one, and it's never really been a key feature in the M&P lineup, is that trigger. That trigger is phenomenal. Uh, it's reliable, all of that. But I think the trigger is the best feature on this new M&P M2.0. Let's pull the Glock here really quick so you can see where that's pulling in at. Get this reset here. Six and a half. It's actually normally a little bit lower than that. Let's try it one more time here. Yeah, five pound eight, eight ounces. You really got to pull from the bottom. Sometimes, sometimes you can get a rating right there in the middle and it's gonna up that weight a little bit. So if you pull it from down at the bottom where your actual finger is, uh, you're gonna get a more accurate rating from that. The SIG P320, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know I'm a huge fan of the P320. One thing I never mentioned was the drop testing and the uh, unintentional firing that was happening on these guns. I'm, I was really surprised to see that they don't do drop testing on a hammer or on where the striker would be. So when I read the article, when they do a drop test, they do it from the side and they do it on the muzzle. Why you would not do it where your striker and the best possibility for it to fire is, is beyond me. Hopefully that's something they change if they haven't changed already as far as the laws on that. But SIG is doing a uh, voluntary recall on these pistols so you can send them back and uh, they're going to take care of you. And it's just one of those things, uh, you know, sometimes that happens and it's growing pains with some of these pistols. But Let's talk about the key features. Now this one's a little bit different. It's the RX version, which is gonna come with the optic already installed. I think we paid around 800 bucks for this and to get a gun pre-drilled with the optic for 800 bucks is actually an amazing deal uh, in the world of uh, optics on pistols. But just forgetting about the optic for now, uh, key features, front and rear slide serrations. You have obviously a four slot rail there for your uh, attachments. You have the uh, actual Sig Light night sights. These are a little bit higher because they want to co-witness with the optic there. Uh, but most of the uh, Sig P320s are coming with the uh, Sig Light night sights anyways. Uh, ambidextrous slide stop, and you can reverse your magazine release. Uh, two 15 round uh, magazines, and there are some extended versions out there as well. Uh, really big magazine release. It sticks up and you can get to it easy. And most of the time, these mags are just going to come right out. 
Uh, the grip texturing is comfortable for most people. And, and when I say most people, pretty much everybody that's put this gun or a P320 in their hand that I know of uh, really likes the way this grip is. It's not overly aggressive, uh, but it's just aggressive enough where it just feels really good in your hand. Uh, point of aim on this one is very natural. Whenever you point this gun out, you bring it back up. It seems to be right on target, and that's what I really like about this lineup. It's just such a great shooter, and it really is a great setup for home defense. If you get a light, and if you and if you're into the red dots, you know that could really work well uh, for home defense because this one automatically turns on. So whenever you put it down, it sits there for two minutes. It's going to turn off, so you're not going to kill your battery. But as soon as it gets to an orientation like that, it comes on, and you can get right on target with it. All right, pros and cons. Uh, the pros on this gun is amazing shooter, feels great in the hand, uh, decent capacity for sure. Uh, overall build quality on the P320, uh, I feel like is really good. They've made some changes with the uh, with the frame layout. You know, they've kind of they've kind of messed with it a little bit as we've gone along. They've shaved down the takedown lever and things like that. So they've made improvements over time, but. Overall, just a fantastic gun and a great shooter. Let me show you this trigger here really quick. Six pounds, nine ounces. Let's try it one more time for consistency's sake. Six and a half pounds. It's a little bit heavier than most of the other guns out here, but it's got a really crisp take up, reset, very little travel on the on the pistol as well and one of the few triggers out here that doesn't have the little safety dingus or some form of it like the m p you have that hinge design so if you pull from the top no bang pull from down here you're going to get a bang obviously but it has internal uh, safety features uh, as far as being drop safe now, uh, obviously we know there's an issue there. And overall, I think that's the only con on the P320. The fact that they were having some of those issues, uh, definitely I would say is a con for sure. But overall, the gun is solid. And the one key feature on this one, I would say, is it's very natural to shoot. And like I said, everybody that's picked this gun up, I've recommended this gun a lot to people and everybody that I know of that has one of these or has shot one of these. It's just such a natural shooter and it, you can really, uh, even if you're a, a, an inexperienced shooter, you can really see yourself doing pretty well um, with this gun. And I don't know what it is, if it's a combination of the trigger, uh, grip angle, whatever, it just, it's just a great shooter. I mean, just balance and everything. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome gun for sure. Going over to the Canik TP9 SF Elite. This is the cheapest gun on the table, but don't take that lightly because of it, because it is a uh, great gun with a lot of features. Uh, obviously you have your pick rail right there, front and rear slide serrations. Uh, you have this red anodized trigger, okay? So that basically uh, is just a safety dingus, and this is like their uh, performance center trigger, if you will, okay? And it's a good one. It's a great one. Uh, the grip texturing you can see right there is kind of rough on the sides. And then you have like these little diamonds or uh, pyramids in the back right here. Kind of has a Walther PPQ style to it with the grip angle and how the slide and everything sits above your hand. It's just really PPQ-ish to me. 15 round magazines. You're going to get two of these again. As far as extended options, I don't know of any right now. You have the stippled area right here on this side of the pistol. All right, so whenever you put your uh, put your finger up there, it's going to give you a little bit to grip on. Uh, speaking of point of aim, obviously you have your fiber optic and your blacked out uh, rear sight there. Um, the way this thing points and shoots is actually pretty good. You have a, a, a deep notch. I don't know if you guys can tell, but how deep this thing is cut out here in the rear. And uh, it, it kind of to me whenever we were shooting it it's a good shooter overall but it just took a little bit more for me to get everything lined up uh, which is kind of weird with a blacked out rear and the fiber optic that picks up so well during the day you would think it would be more natural it just seemed like there was a lot more adjusting for us to do to get on target with this thing but uh, overall it is definitely a good shooter we didn't have any issues with it uh, basically you have the Walther style uh, slide release so you have it on this side 
and you have it on this side of the pistol as well and you can reverse your magazine release but you can see how much bigger it is uh, than the rest of the guns out here and that's just like I said kind of kind of like the Walther. You also have this loaded chamber indicator right there if that's something that uh, that you want. So this thing is loaded with features. You also actually in the rear have a striker indicator. So you can see that little red dot right there goes away whenever you drop the striker. So a lot of features, pros and cons, the pros on this thing, the price, uh, the trigger is amazing on it. You get a really nice set of sights. Um, personally, I don't carry this gun. I don't use it for home defense. It's just one that I've, I really enjoy at the range. Um, so if I were carrying it, if I were using it for home defense, I would change the sights out. I would go with like some Trigicons or something like that. But it's a decent set, especially for the price you get. And speaking of price, these things are under $400 brand new. So very good on the price. Grip texture, everything is really good. And the gun, like I said, I mean, it just it just works. And it's a, it's a great gun. Uh, cons on the gun, one thing I noticed is that the magazines don't like to fall very freely out of there. They kind of stall. And you can see it really stalled right there. Uh, they just kind of stall, so you really got to pay attention to that and make sure that you just rip that ma magazine right out of there. And the uh, and the sights, uh, to me, they're just a con on this gun. I don't know, something something is a little funky either with my eyes or and Miss Tegshot eyes. She kind of didn't like that setup either. I, I just I'm not a fan of it, uh, just not for me. Let me show you the trigger here really quick. Then we'll talk about the key feature that makes this one great. four pounds four ounces it is by far the lightest trigger on the table Let's try that one more time four pounds three ounces so a very light trigger uh, I'm not typically a fan of triggers that light um, but it's not it's not scary light you just really got to pay attention to what you're doing whenever you uh, whenever you're firing this gun and, and handling it. The one key feature that makes this gun great, I would say, coupled with the quality, is just how affordable it is, and that most people can get a gun in this range with a ton of great features on it uh, for under 400 bucks. To to a lot of people, that's very important, and I I, I think the value on this one. Uh, it's just what makes it great. And the last but not least, Miss Tech shot one of her favorites, if not her favorite gun, the Sig Legion. And uh, by far, this is the most expensive gun on the table, coming in at I don't know what they are now, but when I bought it, twelve hundred bucks. Uh, very expensive pistol. So let's talk about the key features: front and rear slide serrations. Once again, you have your rail right there. All right. Uh, you have a metal frame gun now. So this one is going to be much heavier um, in the realm of things, really, than, uh, than these other polymer frame pistols. Uh, three 15-round magazines. And you have this awesome PVD coloration. I, I love it. I know a lot of people have had issues with it. I've had a few myself. You can see discoloration under here. A little bit of rust buildup right here. It's just surface, but still, on an expensive gun like this, I'm not impressed with it, but I do like the way it looks, and that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, the x-ray sights are fantastic. If I could put this set of sights on every single one of my guns, I would absolutely do it in a heartbeat. That front sight picks up so cleanly, and the night sights are a great option for home defense. Now what you have is a double to single action trigger, so that first shot, all right, we obviously cleared these before we came out here, but I like to check anyways. But that first shot is going to be a really long double action pull. The rest of the shots are going to be a smooth single action pull. And that single action is where it's at on this gun. Uh, pros, the sights, the trigger, especially in single action. Uh, the grip texturing and how it feels. You can see you have these little, this checkered design and it just locks into your hand. And you can see the discoloration even on these grips. I'm gonna have to get something else for this gun eventually because of this discoloration or whatever's on there. Um, you also have the checkering here on the uh, front of the uh, front strap, checkering under the trigger guard, and checkering on the front of the trigger guard as well. So they kind of thought that one through very well, I think. Magazine release works just fine. Magazines seem to come right out whenever you want them to. 
Uh, everything is sleek and low to the uh, frame, which is another uh, positive thing, I think. Um, although it's a little bit harder to get to, I think it overall just makes the gun a little bit cleaner. Uh, the cons, we've pretty much touched on it. The price, I think it's just a little bit too much, to be honest with you. And discoloration and just a little things on the grip and discoloration in general, I think, on a $1,200 gun is uh, unacceptable. Uh, how the gun shoots, we already talked about it, man. This thing is a heck of a shooter. It just... It's got such a natural point of aim that green dot jumps right out to your dominant eye and uh, you feel like you can just shoot uh, very accurate with this with this thing all the time. I really love that. Uh, let me show you the trigger here really quick. We'll show you in single action. Well, no, we'll show you in double action first. Double action pull. I think it's going to be around 12, 13 pounds. 10 pounds, 3 ounces. A little bit lighter than what I remember. One more time, 10 pounds, 11 ounces. Let's try the single action here. Four pounds, four ounces. Four pounds, five ounces. Very smooth trigger, very intentional. You don't have a lot of creep or anything in that single action. I mean, it just breaks, uh, reset right there and you're ready to fire again very nice gun a little bit different in the action uh, if you decide that this is your home defense gun and this is what you want you really want to get good with the double action and make sure that you practice you know pulling it from a holster or just a quick shot with the double action and make sure you're on target with that first shot because that first shot is going to be the one that's going to fire and you know possibly your most important shot so that's something i've been trying to do more with this gun is practice I, i'm good with the single action i know that i can shoot with the single action but getting the double action where i'm clean and on target as well one key feature that makes this gun great um it, it's really hard to argue with that single action trigger it's just very very good um and I really like it a lot. I think you would, uh, most people would enjoy shooting that, especially in the single action mode. All right, let's talk about wild cards here really quick. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is the PPQ. I, I don't have the 45 version. Uh, the 9 version, both of those guns are great. Um, also, the XDM and the Springfield lineup, we don't do a lot of work with those, uh, but those are also really good. Um, and there are some other ones. There is the... Uh, the one that still uh, has plagued me that I have not been able to find, the CZ P10C. I would love to get my hands on that one, and I still can't find one. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of great options. And the 15-round uh, polymer frame or steel gun or whatever, you're going to be able to find quite a few options. So hopefully this will give you kind of a broad rundown of each one and what they are really good at. But we have a favorite, and we have a least favorite. And our favorite is, well, we actually have two favorites. And Mrs. Hegshot's favorite is the Sig Legion. She is attached to this gun. I feel like she probably loves it more than me. And she just loves it. She shoots well with it. It's a great gun. I have issues with it um, as far as the uh, discoloration and the things we talked about. But a fantastic gun. Also the most expensive. And uh, it definitely for the most part, lives up to that price. I just wish it didn't have the other issues we talked about. My favorite comes down to the M&P and the P320. And uh, for me, the decision is very hard. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I think the P320 just, just, you know, optic aside, we can just skip the, you know, the optic and the, and the little bit more price on it. Uh, there's just something about this gun. I, I'm just, I shoot really well with it. I'm on target. Not that I'm not with the other ones. I just really love the P320 lineup. And it, it has had its problems too, you know. And they're trying to work those things out. But I just really love this lineup. And I think it offers you a lot. It's a little bit on the heavier side. But it's just such a nice shooter. Well balanced. And I, I just still love this gun. The runner up though is the new M&P M2.0. Uh, when it comes to uh, just the price, the grip, the, the, the trigger, 
Uh, they've done such a great job with this gun. I'm very impressed with it. I love this gun. And uh, those two for me just, just really strike the best balance price-wise. They just offer you a lot uh, in return. Least favorite, uh, me and Miss, Mrs. Hexshot actually agreed on this, and it's the Canik TP9SF. And that's not to say it's a bad gun. Uh, really, it just came down for both of us, just the way it shoots. I mean, I don't know. It, you would think with, a, with an amazing trigger like that, it's kind of had that flat face look almost. Um, it just, I don't know. There's just something about it. We're just not as good of shooters with it. Uh, like compared to the PPQ, we were great with the PPQ. I thought uh, this gun, it's just, it's just like Miss Tech Shot said, a little bit off for us. I don't know what it is, but I still like the gun. Uh, it's just one of those things, just not my favorite at all. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. No matter what you pick, if it's in this lineup or the other guns that we mentioned, uh, most likely you're going to have an awesome gun and a reliable gun. A great one for home defense. So there you go. We laid it all out there for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I definitely want to hear what y'all's thoughts are on each one or what your favorite one is. Uh, but in the small full-size lineup, there's a lot of good guns. Uh, these are our favorite, and uh, these are the key features that I think make each one good. So if you have a different opinion or the same opinion, drop us a comment down below. Thank you guys for everything you do. We will see you in the next one. And as always... Hold them down.